Here is everything you need to know about the Olympic Games' insult to Jesus Christ and his church. It was bad enough that things started off with the Olympic torch being carried by drag queens denigrating the once serious and noble ceremony. Do you know that among the many participants in taking the torch to Paris, there was a total of three drag queens who were asked by the Olympic Committee to be involved in the carrying of the torch. But then things got much worse. And we should have known that they would, because, as LifeSite's France correspondent Jean Smits reveals, we could have known that producer and actor Thomas Jolly, who stage managed the scandalous Paris Olympic opening, which sparked outrage, by the way, all over the world, told Le Figaro, that's a French newspaper, Le Figaro, in June 2023, that he viewed the Olympic ceremony opening as being tasked with choreographing, and I quote, a grand pagan ceremony, end quote. John Smith reveals that millions upon millions of spectators the world over were shocked by a vulgar and obscene parody of The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, in which our Lord was mockingly portrayed by a well-known lesbian Parisian disc jockey named Leslie Barbara Butch, who was wearing a halo kind of reminiscent of the sacred host. She was surrounded by a grotesque troop of drag queen apostles in lascivious attire and poses, but also, and you got to catch this in the video, an obviously very young child, as if to underscore that innocence must be destroyed. I guess for some it won't come as a surprise... But Pope Francis has been silent about the blasphemy. His only tweet in the wake of the scandal, as of this posting anyway, was a positive one about the Olympics, saying, and I quote, The authentic Olympic and Paralympic spirit is an antidote against the tragedy of war and a way to put an end to violence. May sport build bridges, break down barriers, and foster peaceful relations. That was bizarre enough that the Pope said nothing. Even more bizarre was the tweet from Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, who is the head of the Pontifical Academy for Life. He did say, acknowledged the derision and ridicule of the Last Supper, and he said it was rightly deplored. But then he said something most bizarre. He said it reveals a profound question that everyone, absolutely everyone, wants to sit at that table where Jesus gives life for everyone and teaches love. Uh, nope, I don't think they were trying to sit there. They were trying to poke fun at it, say they don't believe in it, or mock it, or whatever you want to call it. But it's not about being there. God wished that they would want to be there, and we will we'll all pray for that. The apology, after a lot of public outcry, came a so-called apology. Now, I want to read you this apology, because you have to listen to it carefully. This is said by the official spokeswoman for the Olympic Committee, and Deschamps is her name. It said, and I quote, Clearly, there was never an intention to show disrespect to any religious group. The She was talking about the opening ceremony. She said the opening ceremony tried to celebrate community tolerance. She added, we believe this ambition was achieved. And then said, if any people have taken any offense, we are really sorry. So in other words, we are very happy with what we did. We met our objectives. We are sorry if you felt badly about it. But it's a total blatant lie that there was never intention to show any disrespect to a religious group. Although maybe they don't think Catholicism is a religious group anymore. Who knows? But that was a blatant lie. The skit was called, by the way, The Last Supper on the Seine, which is the river there. Um, and it was all about mocking Christ in his church and the Blessed Sacrament. So do what you want. But this, you have to remember, Satan's the father of lies. So I guess... The lying, the blatant lying, should come as no surprise. It is almost as pathetic, though, um, as some of the different responses saying, oh, it didn't happen, didn't happen from people around the world. Nevertheless, 
this was a moment where bishops spoke out. Many bishops, actually. In fact, check this out from Catholic Bishop Robert Barron. He called it, and I quote, a gross mockery of the Last Supper. And then he said this, rhetorically speaking, would they ever have dared to mock Islam in a similar way? Watch. You know, a question I would pose, we all know the answer to it. Um, would they ever have dared mock Islam in a similar way? Would they ever have dreamed of, of mocking in this, in this gross, you know, public way a scene from the, from the Quran? San Francisco Archbishop Salvatore Cordelione said that the ceremony reflected secular fundamentalism having infiltrated the Olympics even to the point of blaspheming the religion of over a billion people. Bishop Joseph Strickland called it a new low for our human community. Donald Trump Jr. issued a lengthy ex post calling the performance seemingly satanic while lamenting the games have become an opportunity to push woke ideology. French President Emmanuel Macron praised the producer of all this, Thomas Jolly, for his creative genius while heralding the performance as grandiose. And here is a positive element in all of this. Twitter influencer Dom Luker reports that Raisa Liel, a Catholic skater, won a bronze medal at the Paris World Olympics, and she allegedly was told that she wasn't allowed to praise Jesus Christ. The Olympian responded by saying, in sign language, of course, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That was really, really beautiful. And let me conclude with this. When Christ and his church are attacked, we we Christians, we Catholics, we followers of Christ must stand up for him. We must speak out. We must demand justice. But most of all, we must pray. We must pray for their conversion. We don't chop off heads or burn down cities in revenge. We pray and make sacrifices to our Lord in reparation for all the outrages and sacrileges committed against him. We pray for the perpetrators because... Frankly, we were there too. Most of us have grossly offended Christ at one time or another in our lives. And we do that every time we sin. So we pray for their conversion, for them to escape the fires of hell, which, by the way, are more torturous than any revenge that could be meted out by mere human beings. We want that for no one, not even our mortal enemies. These types of attacks also bring with them the possibility of turning hearts to the truth because it makes atheists and non-Catholics wonder at the directed attack against Christ and his church. A case in point, here's what Elon Musk had to say. He said, and I quote, Unless there is more bravery to stand up for what is fair and right, Christianity will perish. Boy, wouldn't it be great if Elon Musk converted to the faith. Let's pray for that. Let's pray that God, who turns all things into good for those who love him, will do that miracle. Let's love him. Let's pray in reparation for all these outrages and offenses committed against him. And let's pray for the conversion of all, especially of those closest to us. For LifeSite News, this is John Henry Weston. And may God bless you.